I'm David Lepofsky. I'm chair of the Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act Alliance. Our nonpartisan volunteer grassroots coalition advocates for accessibility for over 1.9 million Ontarians who have a physical, mental, sensory, intellectual, learning, or other disability. The Ontario government has not ensured that new public transit stations are fully accessible to passengers with disabilities. It's good that they tried to consider accessibility, but they made many significant and unnecessary errors. If you don't have a disability now, these barriers will hurt you later because everyone is bound to get a disability as they age. Let's look at disability barriers at the recently renovated Go Transit part of Union Station. At two stops along the new commuter train line from Union Station to Pearson International Airport, called the UP Express, and at four of the six new stops on the Toronto Transit Commission's subway, from the Downsview Park Station to the end of the line at the Vaughan Metropolitan Station. Using a white cane. I use a white cane like an extension of my finger, pointing to the ground in front of my feet. It taps the ground where I will step. To find my way, I use my cane to find landmarks to guide me. As I walk along this King Street subway station platform, my cane follows the wall on my right side. We call that a shoreline. Leaning Pillars they recently renovated the Toronto Union Station's Go Transit area. On most of the train platforms, they added several leaning pillars. They unsafely lean into the path of travel at head level. My white cane taps the ground and tells me there's no obstacle there. But then my shoulder or head hits the leaning pillar. Tactile Walking Surface Indicators a landmark that can really help me is a distinctive cane detectable surface marking called a tactile walking surface indicator. It is installed on the ground. First, they can guide me through a large open area that has no other cane detectable landmarks. That helps with wayfinding. Second, a tactile walking surface indicator can be a safety warning. These are helpful at places like along the edge of a train platform. These tactile walking surface indicators need to have good color contrast. Wayfinding done wrong. It's good that there's a tactile walking surface indicator as a wayfinding path on the York University subway station platform. It's supposed to guide me along the platform, but it has a serious problem. I come downstairs to the platform. This tactile path guides me forward a few meters and then right into a wall. Missing tactile walking surface indicators. When I walk through a station's huge concourse with large open areas, it would really help if the floor had a cane detectable wayfinding path. Yet there are none to guide me through the new Union Station Go Transit area or the remodeled Bloor or Weston UP stations. This makes them much harder to navigate. For safety, it's important to have a cane-detectable tactile walking surface indicator with proper color contrast all along the edge of a train platform. This helps prevent people from falling over the edge, including us blind people, people with low vision, and people who are walking and talking and not looking where they're going. It's good that the new TTC stations, like this one at the New York University station, have these tactile warnings on the edge of their platforms. When my cane finds that tactile warning, I know to instantly slow down. Here is an unsafe platform at the renovated Union Station Go Transit area. Its edge doesn't have tactile safety warnings. Here's something weird at the Bloor and Weston stations on the UP Express line. These tactile surface safety warnings are provided at some points along the platform, but not along the edge of the platform that I have to travel along to get to the UP Express platform. They should be along the entire edge of any platform. If I find the safety warning at one point on a platform, I'll expect that they're installed along the entire length of that platform. Another place where we need a tactile marking on the ground for safety is when I come to a boundary between a safe pedestrian sidewalk and an adjacent road or driveway. Where the sidewalk slopes down from the sidewalk to the road, I won't know I've walked into an unsafe space. 
we need a color contrasted tactile marking on the ground. I walk along the exit path from the Bluer Station on the UP Express Line. It leads out to the Kiss and Ride passenger pickup area. I walk from the sidewalk right into the driveway. Because there's no tactile warning, I don't know I've walked into the path where cars can drive. There should be a tactile walking surface indicator there to keep everyone safe. Unsafe platform design. All six new TTC subway stations have a platform design that is unsafe for blind people and a number of others. Each station has only one platform. It's in the middle of the station. There's a northbound track on one side of the platform and a southbound track on the other side of the platform. Here it is at the Vaughan Metropolitan Center Station, the Highway 407 Station, the Pioneer Village Station, the York University Station, the Finch Station, and the Downsview Park Station. What's the problem? I'll show you at the old Osgood Station. There's a dangerous drop-off down to the subway tracks on both sides of the platform. The platform has no wall or other safe place for me to shoreline along. That is a safe distance away from the platform's edge. As I said earlier, when they try to solve this with a tactile walking surface indicator on the platform, I found that at times these can walk you into a wall. There's a much safer way to design transit stations. Here is the decades-old King Street subway station. It uses a safer design. Let's call it the side platform design. There are two platforms, not one. The tracks are in the middle of the station between the two platforms. The northbound platform is beside the northbound track. The southbound platform is beside the southbound track. It's much safer because each platform has a wall a safe distance away from the edge, which runs the whole length of the platform. I can use that wall as a safe shoreline without ever getting near the platform's edge. While waiting for a train, we can stand with our back to the wall, well away from the platform's edge, without worrying that there's a dangerous drop-off right behind us. Reaching different station levels. It's good that these new stations have elevators, but we found problems here too. York University Subway Station has two entrances. Only one has an elevator. The other entrance is inaccessible if you can't use stairs or an escalator. If the one elevator at the accessible entrance breaks down, which happens too often at TTC, then the entire station becomes inaccessible. They should have installed elevators at both entrances. Here at the inaccessible entrance, it looks like space was allowed for an elevator, but none was installed. On this elevator at the Bluer UP Express Station, one floor is mislabeled in Braille. For the ground floor, in print, it says G. The elevator's voice says ground floor. Ground floor. But the Braille says main. The main staircase inside the York University subway station has really bad railings. They aren't consistently placed at a right angle to the stairs. Instead, at least some of the railings are unsafely skewed at a weird angle to the stairs. I try to use the railing to guide me up or down the stairs. The railing forces my feet off at an angle. These are bad for blind people and for people who are unsteady on their feet. We also expect and need a railing to continue all the way up or down the stairs. At the York University Station, some of the railings just stop midway as you go down and reach a landing. Walking forward on the landing to continue down the stairs, there's no railing for me to find. That's bizarre and disorienting. Getting in and out of doors. It's good that the New York University subway station has automatic power doors. They automatically slide open when you walk close to them. You don't have to find and press a button. The Bloor Street UP Express station's power doors are not automatic. To open the door off Bloor, you must grope around and find a button which is too far from the door. When that door swings open, it can hit someone. Other problems happen when the buttons aren't near the door, easy to find and reach, or aren't in a consistent, predictable location from one door to the next. Here's a power door operator at the UP Express Weston Station at the ticket building that's far from the door. Accessibility problems at pay machines. The Ontario government custom designed a new Presto smart card 
and payment machines for paying transit fares. It promised that these would be accessible to passengers with disabilities. When the government unveiled Presto in 2010, the AODA alliance revealed significant accessibility problems. More recently, the government started rolling out newer Presto machines with more accessibility features than the original totally inaccessible ones. Yet these newer machines still have some problems. It's good that after our pressure, they added braille markings and an earphone jack for audio instructions. But how do I know there's an earphone jack? I wouldn't know just by encountering this Presto machine at the Union Station Go Transit concourse. You have to feel all over it until you find what feels like a headphone jack. It only has a tactile symbol of a headphone, but no braille. In contrast, right next to it is another Presto machine, which has a braille label for the headphone jack. One confusing and unclear braille label on a Presto machine at the Union Go Transit concourse says either contact less or contact and then the letter S in italics. What does that mean? Back on the Presto machine at the UP Express Weston station, there's some braille on the side at a bizarre angle. I contort my arm to read it. Getting to York University TTC station. At York University, this is York Lanes, a main hub of activity. The obvious place for the York University subway station to exit is indoors in York Lanes. But that's not where the subway exits. Instead, the closest subway entrance is 35 meters away, outside, across a street. On a snowy day, passengers must go outside and slip-slide along ice and snow if it isn't yet cleared. There is no cane-detectable tactile wayfinding outside to direct me along the route from the York Lanes exit to the York University subway station entrance. I have to walk through this big paved open area with no continuous shoreline to direct me. Let's take a quick look at the other entrance to the York University subway station, the one that is inaccessible because it has no elevator. It's good that a sign outside that entrance says that there is an accessible entrance elsewhere. But where did they put this important sign? It's right beside the automatic doors to the entrance. When the doors slide open, which is often the case, you can't see the sign. When crossing the road here, it's good that outside this inaccessible entrance, there's a curb cut at the roadside. This lets someone using a wheelchair, scooter, or walker get down to the road level to cross the street. But when you cross to the other side of the street, there's no curb cut to let you get back up to the sidewalk. UP Express Junction with TTC Subway the new UP Express was meant to be a great way for travelers to get to and from Canada's busiest airport. If you are not downtown, you're supposed to be able to switch from the UP Express line to the TTC Bloor subway at the Dundas West Station, or vice versa. Switching from the UP Express line Bloor Station to the TTC subway Dundas West Station is not pretty for passengers with disabilities or indeed for anyone. You must get off the UP line at its Bloor station, leave the station, go outside to Bloor Street, schlep your suitcases and kids, walk west 180 meters to the intersection of Bloor Street West and Dundas West, cross Dundas West, then walk north 22 meters along Dundas West to get to the TTC Dundas West subway station. According to Google, it's a total of 200 meters. There are no moving sidewalks or people movers to get you from one station to the other. There's no directional signage and no color contrasted directional tactile wayfinding along the way to direct you once you leave either station. Many, such as new visitors to Toronto, will have trouble finding the way. Two years after the UP Express line opened, it's good that the Ontario government belatedly announced plans to build an underground link between these two stations. We still don't know when this will happen, or what it will look like, or what accessibility features it will include. Conclusion Watch how these problems compound at the new York University subway station. It has one of two entrances that is completely inaccessible. If one elevator breaks down, the whole station becomes inaccessible. 
The route to either of the station's entrances forces you outdoors, even in lousy weather. There is no wayfinding guidance to get to the accessible entrance door. The inaccessible entrance has a sign warning us that it is inaccessible, but the sign is blocked from view whenever the entrance doors are open. Inside are unsafe skewed railings on a major staircase. An unsafe center platform with dangerous drop-offs on both sides, no safe shoreline to follow, and tactile wayfinding on the platform that walks me right into a wall. Ontario's building code and accessibility standards are woefully inadequate. A new building can comply with them and still have serious accessibility problems. The Ontario government must strengthen these laws substantially and substantially increase their enforcement. Ontario's design professionals like architects clearly need much better training on the accessibility of the buildings that they design. The Ontario government must also revitalize and significantly strengthen its implementation of the Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act. That law requires the government to lead Ontario to become fully accessible by 2025, 20 years after it was enacted. Ontario is not on schedule, and Ontario's public transit accessibility regulations don't address the barriers that we show you in this video. Learn more at www.aodaalliance.org. Write us at aodafeedback at gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter at AODA Alliance. For a longer version of this video, go to YouTube and search on Transit and AODA Alliance and long version.